Hello, a very good evening to you. Welcome to ITV News and Monday's Calendar. Hello, thank you for joining us. Here are tonight's main stories. Clean up your act. How a Yorkshire angling club took the government to court over river pollution and won a major victory for environmentalists everywhere. This beck has been polluted for the last three decades at least. We've spent thousands on reports from experts. None of it made any difference. Changing lanes after being ousted from the Tory party over Islamophobia claims Lee Anderson defects to Reform UK, becoming its first ever MP. My phone is pinging now as I speak in my pocket. That's people from all over Ashfield and Nottingham, Nottingham just saying you've done the right thing. You've got our vote at the next election. It's something that I've been very open in saying that I would like to finish my career at, at Sheffield United. Come back, Kyle. The England star was back in Sheffield to launch his new academy today. The Blades will be hoping he'll stay. And the Oscar goes to the zone of interest. Taryn Willers, Johnny Byrne. And from Kimberworth to Tinseltown, how this former Thomas Rotherham college student just picked up cinema's biggest prize. But we start tonight with the worrying levels of tooth decay in children across South Yorkshire. The number of child tooth extractions in the region is higher than anywhere else in the country. It's as the British Dental Society has found that young people living in deprived communities are more than three times more likely to struggle with their dental health. Now, in the latest push to get to the heart of the problem, lessons are being rolled out across schools in Barnsley to encourage a good brushing routine from an early age. Astrid Quinn reports. A simple message hoping to have a big impact. Here, both children and families are taught skills on how to keep their teeth clean and the benefits of dental hygiene. We've got 30% of children at the age of five with very poor dental health that are having teeth taken out on a regular basis, which is not good. A lot of our families can't afford toothbrushes and toothpaste. So that is something we can support with. We guide, we're not here to judge at all, but we do encourage them that poor dental hygiene and oral health will have an impact on those children. And no one sees the devastating effects more than those on the front line. On a daily basis of an ordinary operating list, we could see 15, 16 children in that one um, day of operating. Many children, unfortunately, requiring multiple extractions. We've asked children how does dental decay impact them and they're saying they can't sleep, they can't eat on that one side, they have to change what they eat because they can't have hard foods. They miss days off school and parents then miss days off work. When it comes to children having their teeth pulled, South Yorkshire has higher rates than anywhere else in the country. Last year, there were more than 3,000 hospital admissions for children's teeth extractions across the region with 85% of those because of tooth decay. But with growing NHS dental shortages, some parents believe local efforts aren't getting to the root of the problem. Izzy, a mum from Barnsley, knows all too well the pain of trying to find a place on a waiting list. I've rang all across Barnsley uh, for my daughter. Uh, I've been trying since she was about one years old uh, to get into a dentist. No luck, I've had promises of calls back not had them. I've been told years of waiting lists. It's, it's very frustrating. It's just out of, out of my hands. So. What are your fears for the future if you can't get her into a dentist? I do worry if um, she does get toothache. I don't want to see my daughter in pain. You know, I think those less privileged uh, are honestly just pushed to one side with it. And again, all these dentists that are privatising, there's nothing left for us. And I feel like we still deserve health care, even if we are lower class. It's, it's just not fair. A spokesperson for the Department of Health and Social Care said mobile dental teams will be sent into schools in underserved areas to deliver advice and treatments to more than 165,000 children. These measures are part of our wider dental recovery plan, which will create 2.5 million more appointments in England. 
The region's widespread issue with poor oral health, paired with a system cracking under the pressure, leaves many challenges ahead for those working to fix the problem. But it's hoped initiatives like this one can help repair the state of decay. Astrid Quinn, ITV News, South Yorkshire. And I'm sure you'll let us know what you think about that story. Next tonight, to the uh, latest move by the controversial Ashfield MP Lee Anderson, who today defected to the Reform UK party. Weeks after being suspended by the Conservatives for saying the Mayor of London was controlled by Islamists. Mr Anderson said he could no longer be a member of a party that stifles free speech. And he once again refused to apologise for his comments. He said he won't call a by-election in Ashfield, making him Reform UK's first MP. Our political correspondent, Charon Precara, has the story. He was laughing. Whoever it was, it certainly wasn't a Tory, after Lee Anderson switched teams to a party that, for them, is no laughing matter. Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. People will say that I've took a gamble, and I'm prepared to gamble on myself. While Lee Anderson bets on reform, it's the party's leader who's cashing in the prize. I have found that champion of the Red Wall for Reform UK. He's also, coincidentally, going to be Reform UK's first Member of Parliament in the House of Commons. For his party, this is a landmark moment, which all began on the news programme that pays Mr Anderson £100,000 a year. I don't actually believe that these Islamists have got control of our country, but what I do believe is they've got control of Khan and they've got control of London. After he refused to apologise, he was suspended from the Tory party. But today, Lee Anderson told us he won't call a by-election. Some might say in Asheville they voted for a Conservative MP. That's not any more. Will they still want you? Well, that's up to them. Whenever the election is, Alison, uh, they've got a decision to make. But I'll, I'll tell you this. My inbox and my mailbag have been absolutely solid with support. Only Lee Anderson knows how much of that mail actually comes from Ashfield yeah. constituents. This is my mailbag. This is fan mail. He okay. thinks he has nothing to worry about, but voters in Ashfield don't all agree. Still vote to him if he can prove that he can change stuff around and if he can make it better, make it better and do it for the community. Personally, I think it's a wet weekend. Do you know what I mean? He's just going from one to other to other and then that day he doesn't know what he's saying. It's the same as wrestling. I've always liked the man. He says what he says and I believe he can do something for this town. Until 2019, this was a safe seat for Labour. Now they fancy their chances once again. I speak to residents every single day in Ashfield. They are not talking about which party someone is flipping to now. What they want is real change, and that is what people are asking. So absolutely, this is what's going to happen if we get a general election. People are going to be asking for change. As Labour prepares to battle Anderson for Ashfield, his loss is a blow for the Conservatives, removing one brick from the crucial red wall. Well, Lee Anderson is just one MP, but if he's as popular as he says he is, then this move could have a significant impact. The Red Wall is the prize that all the political parties want to win at the next general election. For the Labour Party, if they regain those constituencies, they might have a chance at a majority. And for the Tories, it's their only chance to avoid electoral oblivion. So if voters in constituencies like Ashfield, many of whom voted for Brexit, at the referendum do start to switch over to reform, that'll provide a major challenge for both the big parties. Sharon Freakera reporting from Westminster. Thank you. Oh, you're watching Monday night's calendar. Thank you for joining us and do stay with us because still to come on the programme tonight, mud, glorious mud. It was a bit of a game of guess who down at Featherstone Rovers Millennium Stadium as they took on Wakefield at the weekend. We'll have that and all the weekend sporting action shortly. And after all that weekend's rain, we're in for another watering as we head through into tomorrow. It will feel more spring-like in terms of temperatures throughout this week, but it's not that simple. All the detail a little later on.
In other news tonight, police have launched a murder investigation into the death of a man in Leeds. The man, who was in his 40s, was taken to hospital after the ambulance service were called to Smithson Street in Rothwell at around 10pm on Saturday. He was pronounced dead in hospital a short time later. Police say there was a disturbance in the area before the man needed medical attention. They're appealing for witnesses to what happened. A teenager has been jailed after being caught raiding a gun shop near Doncaster. Cody Singleton, who's 18, was stopped by firearms officers as he tried to escape after the robbery at Ash Holt Industrial Estate in Finningley. Singleton was pulled from his car and arrested. A box full of shotgun cartridges was found in the vehicle. He was sentenced to two years and one month in a young offenders institution. Well, now to a high court battle between a group of North Yorkshire anglers and the government over the state of our region's waterways. Members of the Pickering Fishery Association have been calling for action to reverse the decline in our becks and rivers for the last 30 years. Finally, they took the Environment Agency to court and won. Now, the government agency has just weeks to clean up its act, but it says it plans to appeal the ruling. Sally Simpson reports. Keen anglers have fished the Costa Beck in Pickering for generations. But in recent years, fish stocks have fallen as native species face an ongoing battle against declining water quality. As it stands at the moment, if the fish can come back and, and occasionally they try, they've got two problems. The first is when they try and spawn in the natural grounds up there, it's smothered in silt and it keeps getting smothered in silt. So even if they find a little bit of gravel, as soon as they lay their eggs, the silt chokes them and they die. So when they are trying to come up here, the sewage works drives them out with pollution. This beck has been polluted for the last three decades at least. Been heavily dredged probably for four decades uh, and it's ruined the beck. But as the fish fought for survival, Pickering Fishery Association forced the Environment Agency's hand and called for a judicial review. It was successful and a clean-up policy must be in place by the summer. It was one of the greatest fisheries in the north of England. But liaising with people, pleading with people, taking measurement samples, all the data you could get. We spent thousands on reports from experts. None of it made any difference. We've just done this properly, how it should be done through the courts. And, and I think it's a good example for people that the small guys can win. It's a proper David and Goliath case. Although the court's decision focused on this small beck in North Yorkshire, it has national implications, bringing into question the Environment Agency's whole approach to the river basin management planning process. The Pickering Fishing Association says its fight was worth it to protect not just this watercourse, but many others around the country. There is not a single river in England that is not polluted. Every single river is polluted and just 14% are in good ecological condition and the Pickering Fishery Association's judgment now sets a foundation, I hope, which will utterly transform the landscape and the health of every river in the country. The Environment Agency confirmed it would appeal against the ruling and added, we are delivering more investment, stronger regulation and tougher enforcement to clean up our waterways this includes reforming river basin management plans and delivering tailored long-term action plans for local groups. This group is now closely monitoring those plans, determined not to let the government off the hook. Sally Simpson, ITV News, Pickering. Well, now to a story that's guaranteed to divide opinion. It's all down to whether or not you're a fan of cats, and specifically other people's cats. I'm not going to give away what I think on that, but uh, going out in your garden and finding evidence that a cat has been visiting isn't something that pleases everyone. And in fact, it can be a source of a bad smell or even tension between neighbours. Which is why we've been speaking to vets here in our region and gardeners too to find out what can be done about it. James Webster has more. They are famously inquisitive. They love to explore and boundaries mean nothing to them. So roaming around to other people's gardens is second nature, according to this vet from Rotherham. Cats enjoy roaming uh, because they're curious, essentially. It's part of their natural sort of behaviour and demeanour. Um, if they're hunters, they'll just generally roam. It's also sort of quite simulated by hormones. So if you have an entire male or female, they're going to be more likely to roam to find a, a mate, essentially. 
but not everyone welcomes next door's cat, especially if they decide your garden is a better place to make a deposit than their own litter tray. Their right to roam is protected by law. And garden designer Danny Clark says having a garden that appeals to cats should be a compliment. Things that will attract cats into your garden are trees, plants, anything like that, soil. So, look, at the end of the day, cats enjoy being in an open space. That's what they're designed to do. It's all about coexisting with them, if you possibly can. It's about us living with wildlife, and cats are definitely part of that. If you'd prefer the cats roam in someone else's garden, he says there are natural ways to encourage them to go elsewhere. If people are wanting to discourage cats in a natural way, are there plants they can choose which will naturally do that? Well, there are. There are plants that are odious to them, but not to us, uh, such as lavender, for example, um, helichrysum, the curry plant, and lemon balm. So if you drop those around your garden, that should deter the cats from entering. And what about the textures of plants? Well, definitely textures. That will make a difference. They don't like holly. Um, and pyracantha or firethorn. And uh, interesting enough, we've got some here, which is um, the remnants of a plant. Oh, spiky. Yeah, yeah, it's been the cuttings of a plant that's in the garden. So that's very spiky. They're no way, they are not going to go near that. Not on a million years. Vets and gardeners hope more of us will welcome cats who pay us a visit, even if occasionally they do pay a visit before they leave. James Webster, ITV News. <laughs> now you see, I've got three cats and we've got a nice big litter tray and they never use it, so right. I think they might go Pity visiting. your neighbours, though. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I know what I'll be planting in my garden this spring. Well, it is time for some sport now and one of the country's best footballers has been back in the region. Zero Accounting Software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. And Arif is with us in the studio this evening. And Arif, we've had an international superstar back in the patch. We have indeed, Ian, as this man, Kyle Walker, the Manchester City and England defender, has returned to his roots in the Steel City. Today, Kyle launched a new scholarship programme at Sheffield College. It's aimed to give 16 to 19 year olds who've been released from professional academies a second chance and allow them to further their education. Chris Dock spoke to Kyle this afternoon and started by asking why he set this academy up. I think it's just about giving people a second chance. Um, whether that's, you know, you've been released or the programme is up to under under 16, so that's giving people opportunities, whether they're you know, from their state or don't feel that they you know, have had the, the luck or the rub of the green uh, to get into an academy. You know, whether this academy you know, puts you in the path again with football or for the education, you know, I, I feel that that's important, that you know, people you know, need to feel that there is a second chance. You know, there is life after football whether that's any age group that you get released from and hopefully I can I can give that back to them and that'd be success ultimately yeah of course of course it would if I can you know put a smile on kids face or you know make them explore a different avenue it's basically about me giving back to you know this city that you know has a as a fun place in my heart I know you've said in the past that one day you'd like to return and play for Sheffield United where you started your career. Yeah. You still think that might happen? Yeah, it's something that I have dreams. I have dreams that I want to do. I have dreams that I want to fulfill. Um, sometimes them dreams don't become a reality, uh, but it's something that I've been very open in saying that I would like to finish my career at, at Sheffield United. I feel that I, sat, I played five games, went to Tottenham and then came back on loan and got recalled. So I've not, you know, unfinished many, business. Yeah, I've got unfinished business basically to do and, you know, to give back to the club that first, you know, gave me the opportunity, whether that be playing or even, you know, being a part of the dressing room and helping the younger lads coming through. Hopefully I can pass on my knowledge in football and, you know, they'll benefit off that in some way, shape or form. But not Sheffield Wednesday. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> 
well, what the Blades would give to have him in their defence now, but maybe not even he'd be able to save Sheffield United from relegation. United looked on course for their first league win in over a month when they were 2-0 up down in Bournemouth, but they couldn't hold on. The Cherries bit back with two goals as the Blades remained bottom of the Premier League. Well, Sheffield United aren't the only team in our region trying to avoid the relegation trapdoor. Huddersfield Town slipped into the Championship's bottom three after losing to West Brom. This was a definition of a game of two halves. Town went in front in the first, but West Brom hit back with four goals in the second. Now, Leeds United came out on top in Friday's Yorkshire Derby. Their 2-0 win over Sheffield Wednesday and with other results going their way means the Whites are just three points off the top of the table. And Rotherham United were thrashed 5-0 for the second game in a row, this time at the hands of Norwich. 12,000 Barnsley fans witnessed the club's heaviest home defeat in the third tier when they lost 5-1 at home to Lincoln in League One, so we won't put them through that pain again by showing the highlights. Instead, we'll skip to League Two, where Mansfield returned to winning ways. Will Swan's winner was his sixth goal in eight games. Bradford are unbeaten in six league games. A first-half blitz saw them beat Accrington 3-0. And Doncaster's Hakeem Adulikin scored straight from a corner as they beat promotion, tracing crew 2-0. Now, that's the football to Rugby League and York Acorn. The last amateur side left in the Challenge Cup were beaten 62-6 by Halifax Panthers at the Shea. No shame in that result. But now, have a look at this. This mud bath, Featherstone Rovers are playing Wakefield. Not that anyone can possibly know who's who. Well, a dirt-covered Gareth Gale ran 60 metres, it must have felt like over 200, to score the game-winning try in Golden Point extra time to send Featherstone through to the next round. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the kit man or woman after the both of them I was just thinking exactly <laughs> the same. That was like going back in time, a game uh, yeah. from the 1970s uh, or something. But it was yesterday. It was yesterday. It was we'll believe yesterday. you, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks mud, very much, Alice. Glorious Aaron. mud. Mud glorious yes. mud. It was mud glorious mud, Kerry. What a hideous day. It kind of rained and it rained a lot in the west, didn't it? Didn't it? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, I was hoping it would sort of move a little bit further over the Pennines, but it really didn't. So yesterday was a little bit more miserable than I sort of suggested on Friday. So here we go, here's some colour <laughs> on another cloudy day that we had today. At least it was a little bit drier and less windy. And on Saturday afternoon, that's when we got the best of the sunshine. So a big thank you to Ian Wilson for this shot. To Joy Stead for this shot. The blossom's really coming through now and it is helping us on the grey days. And also the magnolia is starting to come through. A big thank you to Roy Briggs. But yes, we did have the rain. This was uh, in West Yorkshire yesterday and this morning in full flow. A big thank you to Di Bagliani. We had 25 to 30 millimetres yesterday of rainfall, in fact, over the weekend. And that is almost half of what we'd expect for the whole month. So we did have a lot of rain. And I mentioned on uh, Friday as well, those really strong and cold easterly winds, which over the weekend and today has given us some pretty wild conditions. A big thank you to Trish Morris for this shot in Filey and also to Alan Turner for this shot in Bridlington. So there is a change on the way. Yes, everyone shouts. It's not all good news. At the moment, the North Sea is about seven degrees and we've been getting that airflow for the last sort of five days or so. These are our temperatures for this afternoon. We've really struggled, but there is a change as we head through this evening and overnight tonight. And by tomorrow, we're importing a south-southwesterly and that is really going to change the temperatures. We're average is around nine or 10 at the moment. So 12 Celsius tomorrow, you think, oh yes, but there is a little bit of rain, unfortunately. So tomorrow is actually quite unsettled. But throughout the week, we're on the rise. So by the end of the week, we could be looking at 15 or 16 Celsius. But we do have to get through the rain first, you guys. So, oh. yeah, tomorrow is looking quite unsettled. A gradual improvement. But, yeah, I mean, if you can get the sunshine by the end of the week, I'll take 15. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon that? Think? Yes, let's hope so. We're going in the right yeah. direction at the least. Right, slowly in the right direction, yeah. All right, OK. Yeah. Full forecast coming up? Of course, promise. Thank you very much. Now then, many of us will have seen some of the films which won at last night's Oscars ceremony, but it's actually what we heard rather than what we saw of one particular film that caught the judges' ears over in LA. And the Oscar goes to The Zone of Interest. Taryn Willers, Johnny Byrne. Sound engineer Tarn Willers, who grew up in Rotherham and can be seen here in The Black Hat. He went home with an Oscar for Best Achievement in Sound for his work on the Auschwitz drama, The Zone of Interest. He collected the award along with his fellow sound engineer, Johnny Byrne. Who do we need to thank, Tom? We need to thank everybody. We need to thank the Academy for listening to our film. Thank you, Academy. 
Well, there were others listening intently back in Rotherham, and they included the principal of Thomas Rotherham College, where Tom Willis honed his craft in the film and media studies classroom. It doesn't happen every day, does it? But I think that's what makes it so much more exciting and why that everybody in our region should be celebrating that somebody who was born here, educated here, raised here has gone on to achieve at the very pinnacle of their profession. Everyone's really delighted in college. We've shared the news round today and there's a real tangible sense of excitement. Oh, congratulations to Tan. Now, we pointed out that he was wearing his black hat. I don't know if you noticed when he got up on the stage, he was pointing to his white shoes. Very dapper, very dapper man from Yorkshire. Oh, is, that, is that a thing then? Is it black hats and white shoes? Well, it looked like it was for him. He uh, fitted in with all the Oscar style anyway. And the other thing, the other Yorkshire connection, by the way, is that they were being served Yorkshire pud at the very swanky Governor's Ball afterwards. So, Blimey, you know, you know a lot, don't oh, you? Oh, I do, I do. I've oh, sat up till 1.30 watching it. <laughs> right, let's get the weather now from Kerry. Good visibility on the horizon. Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire weather. Hello again. Not the best of days to start the new working week. A lot of cloud around, a lot of standing water after the weekend's rain and there is more rain to come as we head through into tomorrow. It's a slow improvement in terms of temperatures this week and they'll certainly turn milder day on day as we head through the week. But certainly in the shorter term, grey and damp and some fairly strong winds by the end of tomorrow through into Wednesday. So this was the story so far today. A lot of cloud around, but we are expecting it to change a little bit as we head through into the next couple of days so in a little bit more detail overnight tonight probably the best of the clear spells coming through the middle part of the night it's a fairly quiet start to the night there'll be a little bit of mist and murk over the hills but by the end of the night our winds change direction they come in from a southerly quarter and you can see the rain waiting in the wings in the west so if anything those temperatures lifting a little bit towards dawn so eastern parts probably getting a little bit of thinning of the cloud and a few brighter spells first thing in the morning but it's very short-lived cloud builds from the west and we are expecting outbreaks of rain accompanied by stronger winds to push eastwards there will be some heavy pulses initially but the system does fragment and become more showery through the day but we start to import that milder air quite blustery by the end of daylight hours a lot of low cloud around with a combination of warm and wet conditions conditions across the region for the second half of the day. So as we head into Wednesday, we are expecting it to be very blustery. We've got this weather front and it's certainly likely to bring some rain to northern parts of the region, further south and east. Drier conditions, brighter conditions, feeling better in those temperatures, but still some fairly blustery conditions. It's mild and breezy over the next few days with mixed weather. Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. There you go, not great, but definitely less chilly through the week, that's for sure. Good. A bit warmer, that's what we like. That's what we need, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Hey, listen, listen to this, listen, can you hear that music? Do you think it might win an Oscar one day? The calendar theme? <laughs> I don't know what you're hearing. Let's hear it. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>